flying in space brought me back to Earth. It brought me home. There's a lot of really complex things that go into launching to space, living and working in space, and then coming back to Earth. But I will tell you that I came back to Earth with three very simple, though life-changing, uh, lessons that I'd like to share with you today. And they're on the screen. Um, and you're probably thinking, wow, those are really simple. We all learn those in kindergarten, don't we? Uh, we live on a planet. We're all Earthlings. And the only border that matters is the thin blue line of atmosphere that blankets us all. And as we reflect today on the idea of home, I hope you'll keep those three simple lessons in mind. This is the one picture, just in one picture that reminds me of what it was like to live and work in space. It's really beautiful, I hope you agree, it's really beautiful. It has this kind of, I don't know, almost peaceful, quiet, uh, still look to it, but I know that that silhouetted uh, vehicle there, that, that space shuttle Atlantis, uh, it, we're traveling at 17,500 miles an hour, or five miles a second, which means we're going around the Earth 16 times a day, every 90 minutes, and every 45 minutes or so, we get one of these really stunning sunrises or sunsets out the window. I also know that I am on that spaceship with my six crewmates. We're on our way home to our families. And my friend Jeff Williams is still on the space station, and he very kindly took this picture for us. Um, and the thing it also reminds me of is this, this is a place where I, probably the most separated I will ever be in my life from this planet. And yet I felt more connected there to everything and everyone down here than I ever had when I was right down here in the middle of it. This was my home in space for over 100 days, this masterpiece, the International Space Station or the ISS. I could talk all day about this one picture. It literally is a masterpiece. Uh, technically, politically, the most challenging thing as human beings we've ever done, and we did it in space. Uh, you can't find any better example of living off the grid in this space station, uh, a wonderful state-of-the-art uh, science laboratory and research going on up there, and everything about it, everything we're doing there, our motto is off the earth for the earth, everything we're doing there is about improving life on earth. And that's a pretty amazing thing. We purposely build, we purposely build this mechanical system in space to mimic what Earth does for us naturally down here. It's like a life support system in space, and somehow we've done it in a way that people from 15 different countries make up the crew of six that's on board that station. It's been circling us for the last 20 years. As long as my 16-year-old son has been alive, this space station has been up there with these crews living peacefully and successfully together, and tens of thousands of people down here on Earth doing that same thing, peacefully, successfully, this mission of greater good. We build that life support system in space because living and working in space is all about the people. And we need to take this model, these international relationships that we've developed so well, this model of peacefully and successfully, healthfully living in an environment like space and the space station, and we need to bring that back to Earth. We need to, it's a matter of scale, I believe. We need to listen to the words of, uh, I think, the very wonderful Buckminster Fuller, who said, we all need to be crew members on Spaceship Earth, not passengers. Before that, I didn't think much about those three lessons, you know, the planet, Earthling, thin blue line thing. I, I did, it never really crossed my mind. When I got to space, I wanted to see what was familiar to me out the window. I wanted to see Florida. I considered Florida to be my home. So if I knew Florida was out the window, I wanted to see it. But very quickly, Every time I looked out the window, there was a surprise, this glowing, iridescent, you know, stunning planet below me. Something surprised me. And very quickly, Florida just became this special place on Earth. And Earth became my home. And I started thinking about my home as a planet. 
I started recognizing that everything below me, the interconnectivity of it all, everything and everyone down there are connected. And I started totally respecting that thin blue line and what it does for us. And it's interesting, I've started thinking even more about the relationship that we have to our home. It doesn't matter where we go, whether you're looking out the window of a space station or you're on a mountain somewhere or you're in the next neighborhood over, you're always looking for that connection to your home. Even in this picture, this is a, a picture from of Cassini spacecraft, you know, a robotic mission out to Saturn. And we learn all these wonderful things about Saturn. But what are we always looking for? We're always looking for that tiny little dot of light that's us in the picture. Doesn't matter where we go in space, we're looking for us and a connection, a connection home. And you can launch fancy red Tesla Sportsters to space with Starman, very heavy metal to space, and that's really, really cool. But again, we find the awe in that blue marble behind it. We find the awe in recognizing ourselves and our connection uh, to it. So just really quickly, I'll tell you, anybody that flies in space, um, actually, I think anybody who is excited about what they're doing, what they've done, what they've experienced, you want to share it. You want to share it in a meaningful way. For me, I had the opportunity to paint a watercolor in space. And as I was retiring from NASA and thinking about what I wanted to do in my future to share that spaceflight experience, it always came back to that art. And so I'm working on some projects and programs with kids around the world, space-themed art and healing programs. But because of, they're going to have to invite me back to talk to you about that sometime. But check out the Space for Art Foundation if you have a chance. And I will, I'll wrap up with this picture. This picture, to me, really brings us home. This is the 50th anniversary. This year in December is the 50th anniversary of Apollo 8. And Apollo 8 was the mission where the crew, for the first time with human eyes, saw the Earth this way. Saw the reality check, I think, of who and where we all are. Saw the reality of our home in space. And I ask you, I ask you to leave here today with those three simple lessons in mind. So like me, every day, think about the fact that we live on a planet in space, we're all Earthlings, and the only border that matters is that thin blue line that blankets us all. And I think with that, we can all have our Earthrise moment, and we can all together work forward to a future that is Earthrise. Thank you.